I've been very critical of Hornby this year, and let's let's not let it be unsaid. None of my criticism was without merit. The 2022 range had such classics as copyright infringement, coal tenders, I mean coal wagons, and 60 quid type M chassis. There is a lot that can be said about Hornby these days, you know. Quality has, in my opinion, dipped a bit, and, eh, well, that's, that's the less said about the motors, the better. But, you know, at least once, even if it's just at the end of the year, I want to be positive about Hornby. And let me tell you that the Hornby Duchesses have nothing to complain about. And especially not if it's the prettiest Duchess. Ah, where should I start with this locomotive? Sir William Stanier FRS 46256. I've talked about it in a video before, it was built to compete with uh, the LMS diesels in a friendly rivalry. It ended up beating them for power and reliability, however not for convenience. The real thing was of course painted red as seen here and come on this is just gorgeous. Just the way the cab is slightly shorter at this end, I've, I, I don't know, compared with the new design of Pony Truck, I just think that it's a very handsome design. You know, I've this is for me a new purchase. Uh, I've handled this model quite a lot, and it's so handleable. Having this thing in the hand, it, you really realize how sturdy it is. I can just pick it up by the running plate, and you know that running plate is just plastic. It's just beautiful. I, I literally have no other way to put it. This one was part of uh, of two that were altered to Ivet's uh, specifications. Uh, you know, including a new screw reverser and a larger ash pan, which is why the cab is shallower at this end. Stylistically, this is my favorite take on the Duchess. Like, yeah, some people like the streamlining, but to me they look like tadpoles. It arrived in the mail like this, you know, it's of course nothing dropped off, as, sh as should happen with a quality model. Everything was still in place, and the performance was really, really good straight out of the box. Have I mentioned this is second hand yet? For some reason it seems like this thing just hasn't been used all that much. Its performance was nearly perfect and well all the details still there. There's not a single scratch on her. There's no fingerprints or anything. It's it's lovely. The only thing that I did notice is that this pipe over here is broken. As you can see I can just move it. But uh, that that was the one thing that I I noticed out of the box, and you know if that's all that that a secondhand model has going for it to make it you know worth less than a brand new model, then I can't complain. One piece of detail that it does have and that bothers me is the speedometer on the rear driving wheel, because when she moves, that uh, how would I put that that linkage moves quite a lot, and it it doesn't look natural. Like, I, I've never seen or inspected a loco with a speedometer like that in, in real life, but it, it doesn't look right, let's, let's just put it like that. And you know, when there's something wrong with a model, I can talk about it for ages. However, when it's right, you know, it's just right. It, 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 it looks right, runs right, and uh, most importantly, sounds right. This thing was sold to me as a noisy runner. Well, here's the first running session. Now, as previously stated, it was said that this was a noisy runner, so uh, here's the first performance test. Backwards, it seems. not too bad actually that is not bad at all I was expecting that to be like grindy like the the Hornby uh, J94 uh, wait hold up I'll, I'll run it for reference right oh I sincerely hope you're not watching this at night well that's not good Now to be fair, I have new oiled this one in a very long time, so it does sound a bit crunchy. But that performance from Sir Stanley, uh, Sir William, 
who have made the same mistake again, is not bad at all. It's a shame that I changed my camera setup because otherwise you really, I, I, I just can't show you quite how beautiful this model is. I, you know, the running sessions will have to convey that even with my suboptimal lighting. That being said, I'm going to now DCC fit this. I'm going to detail her up a little bit and then I can show you how beautiful she is in, uh, in motion and, you know, on the layout. I, I just love this thing. I'm not going to say that this is my favorite model, you know, I'm, I'm not quite there yet because, you know, I've only had it for a few days, but ooh, is it getting up there, I, I adore this thing. <laughs> now that was actually really, really good, I didn't ken what that noisy runner was all about. What I will say though is, and that's something that I never liked on any detail uh, locomotive, is the speedometer, because if you, if you watch it move, you notice how it flexes, and and even when disassembling the body, it, it is just a total menace. So, I get why it's there, it's accurate detail, but I'm not a fan, I'm, I'm sincerely not a fan. But that is for the performance on DC, so now she's going to be fitted with a DCC chip, and I'm going to detail her up a bit more. Now that she's running, I can hopefully convey how beautiful this model is. I simply have no words for it. Her performance truly cannot be faulted. At slow speeds there is a slight buzz of the motor, but at any sort of medium speed you're not able to hear it. So if that is what qualifies this as a noisy runner, then people set their standards too high. But getting back to the look of the model, I almost feel like it elevates the scene she's in. That livery paired with that form is engineering excellence, and I do think I am not saying it lightly when I say this has quickly become a favourite. And whilst I could recommend this model to anyone with an interest in the West Coast mainline, or in my case, the final days of steam in Scotland, there's a couple of problems with trying to get your hands on one of these. Firstly, it is a Hornby locomotive, which simply means that both the RRP and by extension the second hand price is quite high. Now with the exception of my V2, Sir William here is by far the cheapest express locomotive I have ever had to pay for. It was cheaper than my Hornby Thompson Pacifics, cheaper than my Dud B12, which gave up the ghost after a year, and cheaper than my bullied Merchant Navy. And with the exception of the latter, it ran better out of the box than all of them. That being said, when some websites are trying to charge you £230 for this, I know I am part of a lucky few who could find this model for relatively cheap. The second problem is rarity. This model would obviously be quite popular given the unique shape, the livery and the name, so you won't find a lot of these around, be it new boxed ones or second hand models. As for me, while Sir William might be even less appropriate for my layout than a Thompson Pacific, this is a locomotive I have always admired, so I am more than willing to pull a Rule 1 in this case and run a Duchess on my single line oval track plan. I simply cannot do anything but gush about this locomotive. It's an engineering masterpiece, it carries probably the best BR livery, and is named after probably the most forward thinking British steam locomotive engineer. 46256 is, in my opinion, the most beautiful locomotive to have ever run under BR, and the Hornby model captures the excellence to a T. I can only assume this to be the case with the other Hornby Duchesses, but Hornby have surprised me before. <laughs>